good muting. Bad muting. I just killed a man. Put my gun up to his head. Pulled up. Good muting. If you've got bad muting, then you've got a bad life, and I feel sorry for you. But don't worry about it. We're going to fix all that stuff up today. I'm Ben Eller, and this is Why You Suck at Guitar. Hello, kids, and welcome to a brand new installment of This Is Why You Suck at Guitar. Here with your new best friend, Uncle Ben. Muting. Good muting technique is one of the biggest reasons that your favorite guitar players, guys like Joe Satriani and Ingve Mouse Meat and Francis Bubble Trousers, sound so damn clean and good whenever they play. All the best players from all different genres of music utilize good muting techniques from both hands. But the problem is, is that most dudes don't even realize that they're doing it, so they never think to mention it in their guitar lessons and stuff that they do. So as a result of that, we got a whole bunch of dudes out there whose playing sounds more disgusting than a breakfast buffet at a strip club. So in order to fix this, most guys, instead of just working on their technique, go out and buy a fret wrap or they steal a hair scrunchie from their stepmom's bathroom or something like that. They wrap it around their strings to mask all the noises that their playing is inherently making. This doesn't do anything to solve the actual problem and it really just makes you more reliant on another piece of gear that you need to get your message across. Not to mention it's very rude of you to take your stepmother's things and go in her bathroom. Those are her things. You should respect her privacy. She's your mother now. Just think about it this way, you've never seen Steve Vai or Ingve or Holdsworth or Satriani or any of those cats on stage with a fret wrap with their guitar, you know? What are they doing that you're not? Good muting. And yes, Guthrie Govan does use a hairband sometimes and I have no idea why, because that guy's playing is perfect. Let's just chalk that up to being super OCD about everything that he does. I've heard him do all that stuff without the hairband and he sounds great, so I don't know. But as long as you follow my advice I'm going to give you today about improving your muting, you'll be able to ditch the hairband and turn from shit to hit overnight. First, we're going to talk about a couple of things that you're doing with your playing that are generating all this noise that needs muting. Then we're going to talk about how to stamp it out using a combination of right hand and left hand muting techniques. So grab your guitar and sit down with me here for a spell. But first, go and give your stepmom back that dang ponytail rig. First, let's talk a little bit about noise. Where does it come from? What does it do? What does it want with us? One of the biggest problems that you face as a guitar player is making a steady living. One of the other biggest problems that you face is sympathetic vibrations. Due to a bit of bad programming, whenever the Matrix was created, we have to deal with sympathetic vibrations on the guitar all the time. Now what I'm talking about here is how if you have a string tuned to, let's say, E, like the top string on your guitar, if you strike another E note, it will begin to vibrate sympathetically with it. So for example, if I hit the ninth fret on the G string right here, if I pick that note and then just sort of stop playing it, I'll notice there's this trail of noise that's been created. That's not this string, this string isn't ringing out anymore. It's the low E string vibrating with it sympathetically. The high E string will do the same thing too. Now I've got both E's ringing out, even though I didn't even pick them. So basically what this means is that if I'm playing through a scale and I'm hitting notes that the strings are tuned to naturally, those strings are going to start vibrating even though I didn't touch them. So if I play through like a C scale, I hit a D note, there's my D string vibrating. I hit an E note, there's my E strings vibrating. Here's an F, here's a G, so now my G string's ringing out. Here's an A, there's the A string ringing out. It's a real mess. It sounds like Chewbacca taking a shit. So that's one source of noise that's a big old pain in the ass. The other one that generates a ton of noise is just a simple act of our fingers coming off of the strings, you know? So if I'm playing through a scale, again with uncareful muting, then you hear it every time I lift my fingers up and come off a string like that. And again, a lot of times those cause sympathetic vibrations coming through those other strings. So it's noise that creates more noise. So that's what we're trying to fight here with our right hand and left hand muting techniques. So let's start talking about how you can clean all that crap up. That way your family will acknowledge your birthday again. Right hand muting. Simply put, the job of the right hand is to full time mute above whatever string you are playing at the time. So let me reiterate on that again here. If I'm playing on the D string, I'm on the D string fret number two here, that's your fourth string if you're counting out there. If I'm playing that string, maybe I'm just playing a melody. 
Well, over here with the right hand, the picking hand, I am sitting on the E string, sounds like that right now, and the A string. Again, the two strings that are above the one that is in play right now. If I didn't mute, it would sound like this. Hear all the noise. Here's me just sitting on those top two strings. Now it sounds clean as a whistle. By resting on those two unused strings, I'm killing off any sympathetic vibrations that might occur if I wasn't doing it otherwise. And the way I'm doing it is just by getting a little skin on the strings. Now, there's two primary muting surfaces on the picking hand. Most of us kind of use the karate chop portion over here, just the sort of fatty edge of the hand. But uh, some players, including old Guthrie Govan there, use the front side of the thumb. I use a little bit of everything, honestly. Kind of depends on what sort of stuff I'm doing. Sometimes I've got both surfaces really in contact with the string, so it's extremely muted. But basically how you're gonna get in this position here is just to take your good old classic chugga chugga metallica, you know, metal palm mute, and just move forward a little bit. Now the reason I'm moving forward some is because if I've got my hand right back here at the very back of the bridge, like I would if I was riffing, you know, those strings can still, if you strum them, you can still hear them. They'll still ring out on you a little bit, which means they can sympathetically vibrate just a little bit. And a little bit is too much. So basically, you can just take that hand position and move forward a little bit. Now this is too far forward for traditional chuggy palm muting. You're genting now, look out. But it's perfect for what we're trying to do, which is to lose any definition and resonance from those strings. So now whenever I hit that E, it's dead, totally dead. So again, all I've done here is I've taken my palm muting kind of posture and just moved forward. Kind of over the bridge pickup usually works pretty well. Try it out for yourself there and see what works best for you. So let's say I was playing through something where I was progressively going through all six strings of the guitar here, from low E to high E. Like our typical four note per string chromatic, one, two, three, four, kind of finger exercise thing, right? Over here with the right hand, I'm progressively muting more and more and more and more strings as I go through. But let me give you a good idea of what this looks and sounds like and give you a way that you can check it yourself too. So let's say I'm starting off on the low E string. There's no strings above the low E on a six string, so I don't have to mute anything now. All right, but next I go to the A string. So now I'm on the A string. So over here, my right hand, now began resting on the low E. I can feel my hand just sort of perched on that low E string over here. You can hear it too. And if I pick the low E, it sounds like that. But if I pick the A, it's loud and clear. Now I'm gonna go to the D string. So basically now I'm muting the E string and the A string. You have the really choked sounding. But the D is all clear. Now I move to the G string. So add in another string under the right hand here. So the G string is in play, so I'm muting the strings above, E, A, D, but the G is loud and clear. Next I move to the B string. So now I've got uh, four strings under my hand. I've got E, A, D, G, but the B is in play. And lastly, if I'm on the high E string here, I'm gonna have E, A, D, G, B all muted back here with the right hand. Again, you can check it just by strumming them. But then the high E is loud and clear. Now something I'd like to do is to give you guys a never before seen view of what these muting techniques look like from hopefully a different angle than you're used to seeing using this magnet rig right here that Troy Grady of the awesome Cracking the Code series gave me. Okay, so I'm gonna play through that chromatic sequence here at the first fret and again, watch how the right hand here, especially the corner of my palm, will just progressively cover more and more strings. <laughs> And then on the way back down, it will reveal more and more strings. I'm covering them as I go. Until I'm not covering anything at all. The hardest thing about this is teaching your right hand to know how many strings are under it, not muting the string that you're trying to play at the time, but always muting the ones that are above it. That's tricky, but it's one of those things that anybody can do given enough time. I recommend doing plenty of those four note chromatic sequences and stuff. That way you get used to just covering up one string at a time, more and more and more as you go through the strings like that. It's probably the way that I'll learn how to do it better than anything. It's also worth mentioning too that your forearm angle has to be correct for this kind of stuff to work. 
Sometimes I see beginners that insist on playing with the guitar in their armpit like this and their forearm parallel with the strings. That stuff just will not work for these muting techniques. It's okay if you're just Johnny Cash and you're strumming and stuff, but if you're trying to rip, think about it. You never see a shredder on stage playing like this, you know what I mean? The form is always coming in at this angle because that allows for your hand to mute above the pick. Whereas with this, the muting is in line with the pick and it doesn't work. So if you play guitar like this, change it, do this. That's where it's at. Left hand muting. Okay, so let's say you've got your progressive palm muting and stuff going on really well. That's already gonna eliminate a whole lot of noise and problems for your playing, but you're not out of the woods yet. See, so check it out. Without good left hand muting, this can still generate a ton of noise, again, due to sympathetic vibrations and stuff. If I'm playing the ninth fret G string, that E note that I was mentioning earlier, okay, well even if I have good muting technique going on over here, and again, I'm playing the G, so my E, A, and D will be choked, and then the G string is not, well, listen to this. Still, there's noise, right? There's not as much noise, but there's still noise. That's the high E string ringing out on you right there. Again, this is an E note, just making the high E string vibrate. If I hit a B, there's the B string vibrating. So you're not quite out of the woods yet. How you're gonna solve this issue is with left hand muting. Your index finger is the biggest tool that you're going to use to eliminate any remaining noise in your playing by using a technique that I call the soft capo. Let me explain. So you remember how we mentioned how the job of the right hand is to mute everything above the string in play, right? The job of the left hand is to mute everything below the string in play. Okay, so let's say again, we are on the ninth fret G string. The right hand is going to be muting E, A, D. The G string is actually in play, and then I'll give you a close-up here, you'll see the underside of my index finger is slightly touching the B and the high E. So in other words, it's not like this, because then they could ring out like that. Check it out. Noise is gone now. We have six strings on the guitar, right? One is being played, the other five, one, two, three, four, five, are all being muted. So basically, whenever you're playing the guitar with a great muting technique, you're only hearing one string at a time. So let's talk a little bit about this soft capo technique that we're going to use to mute under. Again, right hand is over muting, left hand is under muting. One of the first things that you probably learned on the guitar is to play with the fingertips, you know? That kind of instantly puts your fingers in sort of an arched up position like this, which is great, especially for playing chords and stuff, where you don't want any of your fingers unintentionally dampening out any other strings. That's what would happen if you played with your fingers flat, you know? You don't want that. But what we're trying to do is intentionally dampen those other strings. And how you're gonna do that is by playing with the pointer finger, not so much on the tip, but more on the face of the finger. Let me kind of mash this in really hard here so you can see the line on my finger for that string is. You see that? It's not on the fingertip, it's on the face of the finger. Watch as the index finger never plays on its tip like this, rather plays on the face, that way the index finger belly is always covering these other strings that are below the string in play. <laughs> Again, it's just a little bit of training to sort of rethink the index finger and not play like this. Arched up and generating noise like you just heard, but more playing flat on its face. The habit you've got to get into is thinking of above and below with your muting. Muting above the string that's being played at the time and muting below the string that's being played at the time. It's like, let's say I was down here at the second position playing this little burner on the G. Well, what's happening right now is the E string is muted by the right hand, the A string is muted by the right hand, the D is muted by the right, the G is in play, being not muted by anything, the B is being muted by the soft capo, and the high E is being muted by the soft capo. Be careful not to bar, you know? So if you bar like that, there's noise, right? Especially if you're playing with distortion, it amplifies all that stuff. Be uh, really conscious about flexing the fingertip to fret the note, but then keeping the underside of the finger very soft. That way it just dampens those high strings out. 
And an important thing to understand too is this is not just a lead guitar thing. I use both of these techniques all the time, even while I'm playing rhythm stuff. So like, let's say that I was playing uh, like Holier Than Thou by Metallica. That's just an E power chord based riff, right? So I've got my open E and my second fret A. With that, you'll notice that the back side of the index finger here is still draped across all these other strings. That way they can't ring out. Listen to the difference. If I play on the tip, so I'm not muting anymore, hear all that noise and stuff, right? Watch what happens. It's all gone simply because I started draping that finger across the unused strings. And there's also one more muting technique that I utilize that the 33rd degree guitar Freemasons will actually murder me for revealing to you. But that's the risks I take for you guys. Okay, so let's say for example I was playing the 5th fret D string. If I'm using the muting techniques we've described so far, that means that the right hand here will be muting above it. The left hand will be muting below it and the D string will be the only one audible, which is good, nice and clean. But let's say I'm doing some vibrato or something on that note or some other technique that would mean that I have to kind of arch that finger up. So whenever I'm doing vibrato, I can't really keep the finger flattened out like this, so I lose my above muting. And when I hit that string, there's some noise and stuff coming out, so I can't be having that, right? What to do? This is where I start using the tops of those fingers, even using a little bit of the fingernail and the skin on the fingers to sit on top of those strings. See how you can see me just sort of sitting on them right now? And the cool thing is, is using the palm up here, I'm still muting above the string in play. And using these fingers, I'm muting below the string in play. So the right hand can do both techniques if you do it that way, utilize those other fingers, mute out those high strings. That's a Satriani thing. Satriani does that a lot. Because again, a lot of times with those big legato things, you can't really keep your pointer finger straight all the time. You've got to arch a little. So he'll mute those top strings like this. Something that I saw him do in a video a couple of years ago that really helped my playing out a lot. So there you go, guys. Between those three techniques, you want to be able to clean that sloppy playing up in no time. Again, these are techniques that so many of your favorite guitar players use, but don't even realize they do them, so they never think to mention them to you. All of these things that we've been talking about are hyper important if you're playing an electric guitar with distortion on it, because that distortion is just gonna make all those overtones and noises that you're making even louder as you go through. If you're primarily a clean tone player or an acoustic player, you don't really have to worry about this stuff as much, especially if you're playing an acoustic instrument. Most of the time, the notes that you're playing will be louder than the wash of ambient noise that they're creating. So you see a lot of acoustic players that don't play with any of these muting techniques and they sound fine. That noise is still being generated, but their playing is louder than it. And of course there's exceptions in the electric guitar world too, like Marty Friedman. If you watch him play with his weird flipper picking hand like this, clearly he's not doing any of the right hand stuff that we talked about. But I assure you, he is still generating noise. Some of it is being caught by the left hand, index finger, soft capo thing. Uh, and a lot of times too, if you'll notice him playing, he'll play something for a while. He plays pretty dang hard, partially to drown out the noise he's creating. But then whenever he's done playing, he'll always snap into this position to mute out noise that would be there otherwise. Watch those Guitar World videos he did last year about arpeggio playing and stuff, and you'll see him. Every time he's done playing a lick, he snaps into this position. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Ben Eller Guitars. I do Skype lessons a couple of days every week, so if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you and we'll talk about rates and times and all that other good stuff. Drop me a comment and let me know if you liked what you saw and what you would like to see in the next installment of This Is Why You Suck at Guitar. Thank you guys again so much. Cheers.